everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're gonna do a glazing video that has been on my list for a very, very long time. Now, what is yarn glazing? This refers to a technique where you have a really shallow layer of color. Usually it is a dark color uh, where you can kind of see what was there underneath the surface. You end up getting color coverage where it feels like the color is airbrushed on almost. And it gives like a lot of nice dimension to a tonal or variegated yarn and it's just so much fun. I most frequently glaze with navy and then after that I glaze a lot with black uh, because those two acid dye colors can strike really fast we get a really wonderful effect. But lately I've been wondering how royal purple would do as a glaze because I've noticed in some projects that it feels like we get a glazed effect with it at times and so can I do this intentionally and then still see another color beneath the surface? That's what we're going to try today. Now before we go talk about what I'm glazing over, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Kimberly. Kimberly, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And while I have all of your attention, subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And today I want to do this royal purple glaze over a very bright blue tonal using Dharma's Caribbean Blue, which is a primary bright, almost neon blue color. I put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, Safety Glasses, and Gloves, and measured out slightly over one gram of the Caribbean Blue Acid Dye, and then about one gram of Royal Purple. Now, you'll notice that I knocked the cup of Royal Purple over, and when cleaning the countertop, there was like a couple granules of the dye. There was one little chunky one that spilled onto the counter. This is why you wear your safety glasses and your respirator. Now, in this tiny spill. None of the dye came up in the air or anything like that, but it could have been a bigger spill, maybe of a whole container and dropped on the floor and it could have, the dye could have gone everywhere. And so you want to make sure you have your personal uh, safety equipment. And I do recommend wearing safety glasses all the time, not just when dealing with dry dye powders. But anyway, I dissolved the dye in some hot tap water, not worrying about the total volume, just trying to make sure the dyes were dissolved. My eight quart pot is mostly full of water. There's no acid in here yet, but I'm now going to bring over that Caribbean blue dye that I just mixed up. It's a lot of pigment. And I'm seeing there's a little bit of powder left in the cup. Some dyes clump a lot. This one might take a few rounds to dissolve. Sometimes rubbing the dye on the side of the cup can help. Um, I really, really want to get a little hot plate with a magnetic stir bar like I used to have in my lab days because that would make quick work out of the little bit that is left. But I digress and we will finish rinsing out the cup. There's just a hint more color. Okay, and there we go. I haven't added any acid to our dye bath yet. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a deep color. Oh, I forgot how bright Caribbean blue was and I was like, oh, if we do a 0.33% depth of shade on 100 grams, that's not that much. Ooh that's a lot of color. Okay, well, it is what it is. <laughs> It is what it is. Oh my gosh, that's a lot more than I thought. I just added 300 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK. This yarn had pre-soaked for about 30 minutes. And the yarn is 100% Superwash Merino wool. I'm now going to add, I think, six tablespoons of white vinegar. And we are going to raise. I feel like this is a lot of the color already on the yarn. There's still color in the water, but I don't think it's going to get that much deeper than what we're seeing. It's still a bright blue. We'll still be able to glaze over this. Ooh, it's going to be a very pretty color. Um, all right. I am now going to leave this for 30 minutes. We don't need to get 100% of this color on the yarn. This is a color that can take a really long time to absorb, but we'll see how much color we get on here. Okay, I'm, it's been 30 minutes and I'm going to turn the heat off without even looking to see what the yarn is doing. 
and this is partly because I checked at one point, <laughs> um, but partly because we're not gonna do what we might normally need to do with this color and wait for all the remnant blue to absorb. And in fact, when we go into our glazing step, because of the heat applied, we might see some of this Caribbean blue color come back out, and that is okay. But I'm now going to, I mean, I might just let it cool like a tiny bit. Actually, maybe not. We might just deal with the yarn hot and go set up a different dye bath to do our glaze. Pre-orders for the 2023 Spring Mini Skein Mini Series are now available. Starting June 5th, we will have a special event with new yarn dyeing videos every night featuring mini skein sets and even sock blanks. You can pre-order yarn sets that come with 100 grams of yarn, 5 20 gram mini skeins, a lot of fun extras. They're all around a very special to me theme. And there's a lot of add-ons for full skeins and those sock blanks I mentioned. You can find more information in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, and you'll find links down in the video description. We've got my 12 quart pot that is mostly filled with cool water. I have not added any acid or anything to this yet. And we're gonna come in with our approximately one gram of the royal purple dye. For whatever reason, it might seem a little counterintuitive, but I find that I have the best overall glazing coverage if I start cold and then don't move the yarn a lot. I'm now coming over with 300 milliliters of white vinegar. This is a bit over a cup. I think a cup is just shy of 250 milliliters. At least a US cup, I think a UK cup is exactly 250 milliliters, which would be way more handy. But now I'm coming over with our yarn that is still really hot. And we're gonna add it into the yarn, move things around just so we can get some coverage. Just a little bit of movement and we're gonna leave it. Now there was still liquid in the yarn which sometimes helps with our overall glaze. But I'm now gonna start heating things up. So the theory with everything here is because we have the large volume of water, it's gonna take a lot of time for all the dye to come in contact with the yarn, giving us some like all over coverage. But since the acid is high enough, when the color arrives at the yarn, it should strike to the outside pretty quickly. And so with my tap water, which is slightly acidic already, I will sometimes see colors strike to yarn without me adding additional acid. And so if your water has a higher pH to start off with, you might need to add more acid. And so that might be a reason why the technique doesn't work as well for you. But now I've got to try to like just leave it be and not touch it. Uh, and so I found that there are sometimes with kettle dyeing that adding the yarn and leaving it in the pot for a long period of time it gave me the best results. And I'm like, oh, this is how I see an accidental glaze. So it's possible I could start hot, but with some colors that strike fast, if the pot is hot, when you add the yarn in, you get very uneven coverage to start with, where I often want a more all over glaze. And so that's why I've settled on this overall technique. But anyway, I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes and then we'll come back and check in. I don't think the pot will be that hot yet, but we'll see where we are. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if this is working. <laughs> We've got a beautiful deep blue and I mean, I think wet, it might be too hard to tell. Let's see. The color is basically clear. I mean, certainly we have a gorgeous layered like blurple and bright blue. Do we feel glazed? Maybe. I'm like inspecting and I'm like, I see it shallow in some places, less shallow in others. Okay. I mean, I think maybe the color would have ended up feeling more purple if I had tried glazing this bright blue with pink orchid. Which is something we know works, but okay. In here, in here, see how the yarn it feels blue, but there's almost like this really light purple coverage on here. Okay, okay. I think that it did work, and I think it'll be easier to see once the yarn is dry. Now, I don't think the pot has been that hot for that long, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave the yarn in here with the heat on medium 
for another 20 minutes and I'm gonna hop in front of the camera and chat with all of you. So I think that there are a couple things that I could do differently. One, I could uh, reduce that Caribbean blue by like a factor of five, which would still probably give us a nice bright blue, uh, but not quite this intense. Have I done depths of shade with Caribbean blue before? I know I did Frozen when I did neon sets many years ago, but I don't think I had done the Caribbean blue. Uh, man, but I guess if I went to, instead of using one gram, if I used like 0.2 grams of dye, I think that that would still give us a bright blue, but it would be paler. So the contrast between that under layer and the glaze would be more extreme, and then it would be easier to see, especially while wet. But since we already had a deep blue trying to glaze on top of that, it wasn't that extreme. So where could we go from here? If once I remove the yarn from the pot, I'm still on the fence about whether or not this is glazed, then what I can do is we can try doing this kind of setup, this glaze on just white yarn, which honestly is probably where I should have started because that would give us the most contrast. We would see how far that royal purple is penetrating into the fibers. That would have been helpful. <laughs> But I think that it is, it is fine. Like, not everything needs to be a deep dive. If it doesn't work perfectly, then that's a reason to try again. So at the very least, we have a stunning layered tonal here that is a very blurple color. It's more of a true blue with some brighter blue hints and some more like purple leaning hints. Uh, but I still think it's really pretty, even if we don't have an extreme glaze. But I think I was starting to say, not everything I do needs to be a deep dive where we try all these variables and we shift everything. Sometimes you try something with an idea of what you're going for in your head and then it doesn't work perfectly because you use too much of one color or maybe not enough of another. And so that just means that we could end up with part two. I don't always have, I'm telling myself like I don't always have to go big and try a million things in one video. It's okay if something doesn't work perfectly, especially when the result is still really, really beautiful. <laughs> but anyway, Kimberly, I hope you're really excited about the way that this colorway is going. But there are also many other ways that you can help support the content here. Down in the video description, I have links to everything that I use in my videos from uh, certain types of pots and pans, if those brands are still available, to the removable nylon zip ties, and even the yarn. Some of the links are affiliate links, which are clearly marked and help support everything that you see here. But it's also a way that I'm trying to help you in return because there are links down there that also aren't affiliate links because I wanna make it as easy as possible for you to find the materials that I'm using for my videos. But anyway, <laughs> let's go remove the yarn from the pot and see if I have any other thoughts. Deep beneath the surface, through the haze, I feel like I see glazing in there. This is always the point of the video when I'm very unsure if things have worked. But anyway, I still have 12 more minutes on the timer. I'm now going to turn off the heat and we're going to remove the yarn carefully. I don't see the third zip tie, so we're going to start removing two. Then we'll come back for the third. Now we do see, uh oh. If you're worried about any tangles, um, I like to wait until the yarn is dry to resolve that. Now, okay, I definitely see some glazing going on. It is very, very pretty. If a bit deeper, oh dear, than what I had intended. Okay, so since I can't find the zip tie, aha, here it is. It was like, my goal is to like pick up the yarn by like a wide bunch, but yeah. Um, I will, <laughs> this is tricky to untangle, then I'll do it on camera. Thankfully, I dyed three skeins and two are going to Kimberly, so uh, there isn't a problem. Now, the one thing I did want to point out here is that we've got some blue left in the water. This is blue that came back out of the yarn. This is not part of the royal purple. And I'm not expecting to have significant bleeding when we wash this because we haven't used that much dye. But sometimes with a bright blue, that last little bit of dye, I'm likely to leave behind in the dye bath because if I let the yarn cool in the bath completely, all that blue would likely bind to the yarn 
And then sometimes you see some bleeding happen, which can be very, very frustrating. So I found that if sometimes I leave that last little bit of blue just in the pot, then there isn't as much of a bleeding issue. So again, I'm not anticipating any bleeding, but I wanted to explain why today I'm not leaving the yarn in here to cool. But anyway, we do need to let the yarn cool completely, but I'm 100% seeing glaze. I'm seeing a bunch of pinks on the surface and I am thrilled. The coverage like isn't as even as it can be. There's some areas where we just see that bright blue. Um, and I think that could be because we added the yarn hot into the pot. So then there was yarn that was just, there was dye that was just like, oh, I'm in contact. Let's strike immediately. <laughs> or maybe I didn't move it enough, but either way, it's still beautiful. So uh, again, once it's cool, then we'll go and wash it. Let's wash our glazed yarn where... You know, there's many places where it's not quite, doesn't really feel glazed, but it does feel glazed in some places. I think that I'm going to call this a hesitant win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll snow more once it is dry, but we're washing in just some cool tap water, and I'm going to add a little bit of some dish soap, uh, and we're going to see if we get any color bleeding. Now, clearly, we do have that tangle to take care of, and I see a hint of some blue, but honestly, that's not bad. Not bad at all. I'm going to fill it up with water. All right, let's see how we are doing. Oh, we're good. We're good. I'm not seeing anything come out. So I'm going to now put the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll take a really close look at our glaze attempt. Before we talk about this yarn, let's deal with untangling. Normally I might remove the zip ties before I come and show off the finished yarn, but I'm not going to do that today. And it looks like, oh interesting, I'm not seeing any disorganization around the zip tie. So I think that this yarn just got, something got caught on itself. And so I'm grabbing it and sort of snapping it and seeing what we can see. Because I definitely feel that there's something tight in here, but I think in this case we're not tangled as much as we had some strands loosen up. So by rotating it, yeah, there's a strand that's a little long. By rotating it and snapping, I don't even think I'm completely on camera, all of a sudden it's getting neater and neater. And there might be one little long strand. That's not something I would go ahead and reskein for necessarily because I think that's easy to deal, to deal with. But um, the more you do this, the more it sort of comes back <laughs> I'm totally off camera, um, but I have both hands through the skein and I'm just snapping it. Um, and so now we have something that looks as nice as our other skeins. And these ones um, are like ordered already, but I'm still, I always give them a good snap. Anyway, I hate to say it, but I'm a little disappointed I didn't have more of a tangle to show up. Here. I mean, obviously, I'm happy that the yarn was not tangled and that I don't need to spend time detangling it and reskeining it. So I'm very happy about that. However, it would have been nice to just have an example to show on camera. So, anyway, I can already tell that I'm going to struggle a little bit to capture just how beautiful this color is. We see that Caribbean blue, and then there's elements of a really vibrant royal blue in here from the purple glazing on top of that because ultimately if I was going to do triangle color mixing uh, you would add some pink to that Caribbean blue to make it feel more like a Crayola blue. The color coverage is not perfectly even but you don't really expect even coverage when you're doing a glaze however if we wanted to have even more coverage on some of these lighter sections, the thing to have done would have been to move the yarn around a little bit when I initially added it. But 
when you move the yarn more, you're also risking sort of helping some of these purple colors go more into the interior of the strand. So that's a balancing act. And this is where the camera is going to struggle, and so I'm going to do my best to describe this. Although actually you can see the glaze. You can see that we have uh, this purple. I mean, it looks like a blue color. It's hard to tell it's a purple that is so shallow on top of the yarn. If I had done a typical over dyeing video where I dyed in the Caribbean blue and then we layered the royal purple on top of it, we wouldn't get this sort of glaze feel necessarily. Yes, we might have some sections that feel more bright blue, some that feel more royal blue, but then and things in the middle that felt, you know, a little bit blended. But the glaze is this shallow application of color, and so you feel like you see that brighter blue all the way throughout. And I don't know of a much better way to describe it other than that. Sometimes if you take a strand and untwist it, you can see some of that uneven color application. Um, it's a little hard, I think, on the swish to see that because it is a loftier yarn. It's not a high twist yarn. And so if I was using a much higher twist yarn, then if I untwisted it a little bit, you would see more of that original color or even white underneath. But there's no doubt, no doubt that this worked and it worked beautifully. I mean, sometimes when you're looking at the yarn, it feels almost like just the halo on the outside took up color. Oh, this just looks so, so good. The one thing I still feel like we're not really picking up is a bit of the pink that is there in the purple. I see it with my eye, but I have a feeling things are going to feel a lot more cool toned on camera, and we're not going to see that hint of red that is in the glaze. Kimberly, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you will love this yarn. I am so proud of how it turned out. And if you would like to learn more at home about how you can become a lab partner like Kimberly, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I'll have links to them down in the video description. What's next? What's next? Well, I would like to do some glazing with royal purple over just bare yarn. So that way we can see the maximal contrast and see like the white shining through and see how purple the top layer feels. That's something I would really like to see. But then imagine glazing with the purple over a pink instead of the navy, but like leaning into the warmth. Like that would be so cool. Or what about glazing over something more contrasting. Like what would happen if we did the purple over a really soft yellow? I don't know. I don't know how that would turn out. Or even like the purple over a brown. There's so many possibilities. And there's also a lot of other colors that we should try playing around with for glazing. However, in general, a lot of greens probably won't work very well for glazing. Uh, a lot of pinks also, greens and pinks tend to take a lot of time to absorb to yarn, so those are really good for the like under layer. But we know pink orchid works, we know that strikes really fast, so if you're ever playing around with your colors and you notice, oh wow, that color struck a lot faster than I was expecting, it's a good candidate for being the glazer. And if there's a color that takes forever to strike, that might be a good glazy. <laughs> Please let me know down in the comments if any of these color combinations are something that you would like to see. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.